Good morning, ladies. Uh, so good to be here again. I, uh, as I told y'all earlier, I solicit your prayers. Uh, I just got to breathe and uh, know that God is God and for him to sit me down and him stand up. But I, uh, I, I, I feel embraced because I see y'all's face. And uh, I thank you guys uh, for your attention, ladies, that's on the line. I thank you guys for calling in. For those that are looking at us uh, on Facebook Live, I thank you guys. Uh, and so I'm not going to prolong the time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go to God in prayer. And then we're going to journey into our subject for this morning. Father God, we come. Lord, we come just to say thank you. Thank you, God, for your promises, Father God. Pastor Tim told us this morning that, uh, you know, while we're transition, transitioning, there are some promises that God have left us. And so we thank you for the promise that even when it seems dark, there's light, God, because you are the light of the world. And so we thank you this morning. God, we ask that you come and commune with us, Father God. Holy Spirit, I ask, as I always do, that you lead, teach, and guide. I ask that you sit me down and you stand up. Speak through me, speak to me, speak to those that are in the audience, God. Speak to Sienna, speak to Bressler, speak to April, speak to Judy. Speak to those in uh, the Facebook uh, live. Speak to those that are on the conference call. God, because you understand and you know all, Father God. But, Lord, you told us this morning to hang on because help is already here. And so we thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do, God. We bless your name this morning. We honor you and we bless you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I am uh, elated this morning. Uh, Pastor Tim has set my soul on fire. And uh, he's, uh, you know, I, 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 I feel like... Uh, I feel like it's fire shut up in my bones because he opened up some things. He, 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 God was intent for me to be here this morning. I'm going to say it like that and I'm going to leave it like that because God is faithful and God is good. And so we are going to continue on the path that we were on earlier this morning and uh, talking about God's promises this morning. Ladies, if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to me to Psalms 121. And we're going to try and unpack this a little bit this morning. It's another one of God's promises. And so as we get ready to journey into our lessons, our lesson this morning, I am going to uh, go ahead and read our scripture for the morning. And it is uh, Psalms 121. And it says that I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. From whence comes my help? From whence comes my help? There's a question mark there. He says, my help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He would not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will neither slumber. He won't get drowsy. He, 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 he won't get, he won't know it all. He, 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 he won't sleepwalk on us. He, he neither slumber, nor does he sleep. Behold, and that word behold means to look. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord, I, let's make it personal. Let's tell the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you. He shall keep you. From all evil, he shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And so we thank you, God, for your word, God. Father God, uh, we're going to look at Psalms 121. And I, 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 uh, as I was studying this, I, hadn't, I started reading it first. And pastor always tell us to... Get what we are going to get from the scripture. Let the scripture talk to us. And so as I was reading the scripture, as the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart, all I, all I kept hearing was, hang on, your help is here. It's already here. And that reminded me, Gail, when Gail was going through uh, the trials of her job back in 2014, 
and um, she was looking for a job and it was hard on it. And, you know, being young, single, had bought a home, first job that she had ever lost. And every morning when she left, when she did, well, God did bless her to get a job. But it wasn't what she wanted. The salary wasn't the same. And so there were some struggles and challenges there. But every morning she would come by the house and when she would leave the house, we would have prayer. And I would peep out the garage door and this is, and I would tell her, I would say, Gail, greater is already here. And what I meant when I was telling her that was, the spirit that lives inside of you, that Holy Spirit that's inside of you, he's greater than any challenge that you're going to walk into and that you're going to in, in, in encounter as you go to work this morning. Even greater than who you're going to come in contact with. It's already here. So this help, this source of help that we're going to talk about this morning, it's greater than anything that we can imagine. And so... Um, I put this at the top of the lesson. It says, in these days and time, it seems like there are dangers lurking all around. Uh, we got COVID. We got uh, people laid off jobs. We got debt. We got um, uh, uh, children that we wondering, should we send them to school? Should we keep them home? Should we leave our jobs? Should we stay at home with our children? We got uh, husbands and wives coming home and say, well, they laid me down today. I, I, I'm not going to get paid for the day, so my check going to be a little short come Friday. We, we, we got dangers. We got things. We got depression all around us. We got families that have been closed up in homes, and husbands are now finding their wives, and, and, and wives are now knowing their husbands, and they are looking and saying, did I actually do this? You know, y'all you know, know what I mean? Yeah. And so think we're, we're in the midst of turmoil. And, but hang on. Our help is already here. And so he, he, it says that there are, there are thieves that want to rob us of our peace, joy, and victory. Because we already got the victory. There are sins that will quench the fire of God in our souls. There are problems that will strip us of our glory of that will strip us of the glory and the power of God. I just talked about that power, that Holy, that Holy Ghost power that lives inside of us. There's some things coming up on the sea, and it want to strip us of that power. It wants to minimize that power that lives in us. But God said, no, no, hang on. I'm already here. Hang on. So then he, it, it, it tells us, it, it says that I, 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 when, when I was pinning this, I said, you know what? I don't know about nobody else. But it's been some dark days in my life. And, and, and I wouldn't be able to stand here if I didn't know that greater was already here. So through the difficult times that he's brought me through, say these, these times when danger surround, surrounding my life, I wonder where, some days I wonder where was my help coming from. Uh, I don't know where you are today. You might be wondering right now, where's my help coming from? But I stand here, I stand here to, 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 to let us know that as we unpack this song, it's already here. And so, ladies, we, we going we gonna, to we, we gonna, we gonna try to unpack it right here. And we're going to look at verse, we're going to start with verse, verse 1. We're going we gonna to look at verse 1. Verse 1 says, I will lift my eyes to the hills. But then the psalmist said, from whence comes my help? And it's a rhetorical question because he, he answered it himself when we go to verse 2. He knew the answer. Yeah. So sometimes we, we ask ourselves rhetorical questions because I've been standing in my kitchen and I've opened my, 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 my pantry uh, in the days when Tyrone was laid off. I opened my pantry and I said, Lord, it looked kind of bleak in here, but I know you got me. It, 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 it's, it's something going on. I don't know what it is, but I know you got me. So we, we, he answered his own question. He said, I will lift my eyes to the hill from whence comes my help. He said, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, not, my, my help don't come from the hill. Because remember, there are some things in the hill. I don't know what your hill is this morning, but I've had some hills in my life. And in those hills back in the ancient days, 
this, this, this song, this, this song was written, it's, it's a song of ascent. And, 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 and this song was written for sojourners and pilgrims and soldiers that were uh, traveling. It was for travelers. And every year, three times a year, they traveled back to Jerusalem for the feast, the feast of Passover, the feast of the Pentecost, the feast of the Tabernacle. And so as they traveled, uh, y'all remember Jerusalem is going up. So when they're traveling, they have to go up. And they're going up in these steep mountains, but in these mountains and hills there lurked danger. There was idolatry and there were thieves waiting to rob them and take what they had and to rob them of their, their peace. And, they, and, and check this out though, y'all, they were going to worship, but they were getting robbed on the way to worship. And so what, what happened here, the psalmist said, I know it's some things lurking in this hill, but whatever's in your hill this morning, he said he didn't stay there. He moved from looking at what he was thinking going on in the hills, and he focused on where his help was going to come from to get him through the hills and get him on up to Jerusalem, to the temple, so he could worship God. He said, actually, he didn't wait till he got to the temple. He started worshiping in verse 2 because he said, my help comes from the Lord. He said, who made heaven and earth. And so when you think about the God that stood on nothing and made something, and when we go to Genesis 1 and 1, when he started creating, and that's what the psalmist, the psalmist went all the way back to Genesis 1 and 1. And God got to gotta bring some things back to our remembrance. The psalmist started remembering. He said, oh, I know why. He's my help. I know why my help comes from the Lord. Because here's a God, he created heaven and earth. And he didn't stop with heaven and earth. He created me. He created you. He created him, she, them, and they. He did it all. And so he said, this is in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, there go that Spirit again. The Spirit of God was hoovering over the face of the water. Then God said, let there be light. All he said down through here was let there be. So when you in your hill moment, just hear God saying, let there be. When you confused and no peace around, just hear God saying, let there be peace. Because y'all do know he spoke to the winds and the waves. And he made them behave. So if he can do that, this God that created everything, Judy, this God that stood on nothing and made something, oh, that's where my help come from this morning, y'all. Even in the midst of COVID-19, that's where my help come from. Even in the midst of it taking my brother-in-law out of here because I know he's in a better place, that's where my help come from. Even in the midst of sitting in a hospital in March of 2020, didn't know what was going on with my lungs, but had been diagnosed with chronic uh, uh, pneumonia. At the time, COVID was, was lurking in my heel. It was lurking, Bressler. It was there around the corner. But my help, Judy, my help was there. The source of my help was there. And our hand I said in verses, I, I just went on, I, I, I just went on without the handout, but this is this is going back to the handout. The handout is it, it was telling us in verses uh, two through four, because it didn't it it, it didn't encompass one, because one was all by itself. Because he said, I would look to the hills from which come in my help. No, not my help, because at that point, the psalmist began to say, no, I got to focus on who is my help and where my help is coming from. So when the Holy Spirit started me to write this outline, I had to start outlining that too, because one was already taken care of. In verses 2 through 4, he is the source of our help. A, verse 2, he's our creator. We just talked about him being our creator. 3A. He's our confirmer. And 3a says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He won't, I told you earlier, Sienna, he won't get drowsy. He, he won't, he won't uh, gnaw it out on you. He won't do it. The other day I was, um, a friend of mine sent a, a post 
of her posting, she said she was so sleepy. And it was the, it was the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm turning somewhere, y'all, because I'm trying to get her somewhere. It was, uh, it was a picture of a lady, and this lady was sitting at a desk, and the lady was so sleepy, she had forgot where she was. She was at work, but she was just out like this, and all you could see was Z's going up. She was asleep. But our God never sleep. We go to sleep, and that's why we can sleep, because God never sleep. It says he will not allow our foot to be moved. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says it like this. It says, um, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is coming to me. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So where we are in this, yes, he is the source of our help. He, he is our confirmer. He stabilizes us. He stabilizes us. He keeps us. Uh, he, he, he don't let our foot uh, fall. He don't go to sleep on us. There was a story that was told about an old lady that was um, doing World War II and they, the, uh, when the city was being bombed and the uh, bombs and, and wars and everything was going on and houses was crumbling and falling on people and they had did accountability after the bombing stopped and they had accounted for everybody but little Miss Smith. Miss Smith was 95 years old and they were going around and they were looking, they were looking, and they got, finally got to her house. And when they got to Miss Smith's house, they dug out the rubble, and they got to her bedroom. Y'all, they found 95-year-old Miss Smith in her bed asleep. Asleep. The soldiers asked to say, how can you sleep with all of this? Your house fell down around you, April. How can you sleep, Miss Smith? She said, well, she said, the Bible tells me that my God neither slumber nor sleep, so I went to sleep. This is the God that we serve. This is our help that we are. This is the source from whence our help is coming from. And the source is greater than the resources. We have some resources, but God is the source. I, I, I think about uh, times when, you know, we relied on our paycheck and we relied on going to work every day. We relied on going out of our house every day. And so it's different now. Some of us can't go to work every day. Some of us can't get up and do what we need to do, but God has never stopped the paycheck. He's fixed it to where we can work from home or he's fixed it to where he's given us unemployment where we can kick in and, and you may say, you may be saying oh, but it's not enough. Oh, but whatever God gives you is enough. He wants us to reevaluate because he is our helper. He is God. He is our confirmer. He's the one that keeps us. He neither slumber nor sleep. So I've learned in these 63 years, because God is woke, because God is up, I'm asleep. I'm asleep. I give it to him and I leave it there. And that's what he wants us to do in this pandemic. He wants us to give it to him and leave it there. I've had some challenges. I've had some uh, thoughts about pandemic and coming out and doing what I need to do. But God said, no, 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 no. It's, it, 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 this thing is about you. I'm working this thing out for your good. I am working it out for your good. So trust me. Ladies, we got to trust him. We got to trust him knowing he is our help. No matter, there is nothing. He told Abraham, there's nothing too hard for me to do. There is nothing. He, he's a company keeper. He, he's, a, he, he's a babysitter. He's a virtual teacher. He, he, is, he, 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 is, he is our locksmith when we locked out of life and feel like we can't move on. He is all that we need. He is the source. He is the source. And so when we make God our source, when we make him our creator, when we make him our confirmer, then we know that where our help is coming from is coming from him who is the source. Um, verse 3b through 4 says, 
He's our constant helper. He's a constant helper. It says, he would not allow our foot to be moved. We, we know that. He, there's no temptation taken unto man, but he gives us a way of escape. We don't have to sin in this thing. We, 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 I, 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 I'm just going to say it the way I want to say it from Montgomery. We ain't got to sin. We ain't got to do it. Because there are ways we ain't got to go and we ain't got to uh, 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 push pins on paper to try to get nothing. We ain't got to go underhanded and, and through the Underground Railroad to get the resources and the sources that we need during this pandemic. God has given us a way of escape. We ain't got to, yeah, we, 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 there's a racial upheaving. There, there is violence in the world. There's killing in the world. There are things, but God didn't wake up and say, I'm surprised. No, no, no. He already knew. But what he's asking us to do is to trust me in this. I am your helper. When you need, come to me. Go down on our knees and say, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. God, you know what they're doing to our young black men and women out here. Father God, hear our cry. And I guarantee you, he hears. And he'll work on our behalf. And so he don't, he don't want us in the streets killing and shooting and robbing and throwing bricks. And he, he wants us, yes, we protest, we peacefully protest because it is, it is the right. It is what God has allowed us to do. But the source of God for his people is to bring it to him in prayer and leave it there. And, 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 and I think my, my, my issue is, too, he wants us to still, he wants us to still go out and make disciples. Even in the midst of unrest, we're still able to speak to our young people. We're still able to talk to them and tell them and lead them in the right direction. That is what God is calling us to as his, uh, as the source. And so he says that, uh, behold, behold, look, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He won't sleep. He, he is, uh, he, he is constant. He's a constant helper. He's up all day, all night, 24-7. And when I was doing this, the only, the, 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 the only thing I saw was the Energizer Bunny. And that y'all know that, that, that bunny goes on and on and on and on and on and on. But I do believe that sometime that bunny going to run out because that battery going to go dead. <laughs> but God, God doesn't need a battery to keep going. He's just God. He's just God. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is Alpha and he is the Omega. There is no end, there is no beginning to him. There is no ending. He is just God. And he wants us to trust him, ladies. He wants us to believe that he is our helper. Well, you may be saying this morning, well, Sister Stamp, you just don't know. You just don't get it. You just, oh, yeah. I get it. I get it. My struggle might not be your struggle. And I understand when we in it, y'all, we're in it. Nobody, it seems like nobody has been where we've gone before. But I tell y'all, the creator that made you, he sees you. He knows what you're going through. He knows, he, his son knows. Because when Jesus was hanging on that cross, Jesus experienced everything that we are experiencing right now. And he is now yet sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he's making intercessions. So what you do when you feel like nobody understands, when you feel like you're alone, know that, hang on, help is already here. Because Jesus didn't die. He got up and he's yet alive. And pray, sisters, pray, sisters, humbly and earnestly to him for what your need is, and he shall meet you where you are and meet your need. He is a constant helper. That, that word helper is an assist. He assists us. He aids us. He comes to our rescue. He lifts us up out of the murk and miry clay. He helps us. 
to stand. He builds us on a firm foundation. And that's why we got to go. We got to stop building our foundations on what Sister Sally said or what Annie Mae said. We got to build our foundations on what God said. Because if Sister Sally and Annie Mae ain't telling you, thus saith the Lord, I tell you to do like Forrest and run, sister, run. Because you need to know what thus saith the Lord. Because that's what's going to make your way smooth. That's what's going to help you to look beyond the hills in your life of where you are and get you to where you need to be. Ah, uh, he's marvelous, y'all. He's marvelous. He's a wonder in my soul. He is a wonder in my soul because he's been my help, y'all. He's been my help, y'all. When I was down and out, he's been my help. He's been my help, y'all. And I can sit here and I can teach that greater is already here, ladies. He's here. He's waiting on us to tap into his spirit. He's waiting on us to tap into his spirit. Let's stop whining. Let's stop complaining. Let's stop talking about each other and talk about God with each other. He's here. He's waiting on us. Hang in now. Don't pick up the rosé. Don't pick up the henny. Pick up Jesus because he's waiting on us. He's greater than all of that because he is our source. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's greater. I'm here to tell you, ladies, he's greater. He's greater. He's greater, y'all. And the psalmist realized that he was greater. The psalmist realized as a, as a, as a constant help, I need rescuing. I, I might just need rescuing as I'm on my way to worship. And y'all know, y'all done been there, see? Y'all done been in the midst of praise and worship, uh, in the midst of prayer, wrestling, everything begins to start creeping in your mind. You begin to start thinking about yesterday and tomorrow, what's going to happen. And you begin to start thinking about who shot John and what did this. And some days I just get up. I say, you know what, Lord, let me just start all over. I, I, I can't. But while we are thinking about that, he's there to assist us, Judy. He's there to help us through this where we can basically give him continuous, consistent praise that our worship will be for real. We got to let our worship be for real in this thing. We got to stop focusing on what could have been or should have been. God got us where he needs us right now. And he got us focusing on him. He got us knowing that our help cometh from the Lord. He's our creator. He's a source of our help. He's our creator. He's our confirmer. He's our constant help. And so now we're going to look at God as the strength of our help. He is the strength of our help. He is... Uh, here it is in verse five, and we 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 study going up. We going up the we going up the worship. We study going up to Jerusalem. He he is our strength. He is our he is the strength of our help. And a verse six, uh, verse five says he protects us from our enemy. Verse uh, six says he protects us from the elements. And when we look at verse five and six, verse five and six says, Lord. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. And when they talk about him being our keeper, he is, uh, he, he, uh, 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 I think about when I, when, when Gail was little and I would take Gail to the babysitter and the babysitter would keep Gail while I was at work. And in keeping Gail, because Gail was a child, there were things that the babysitter had to do for Gail that Gail couldn't do for herself. And I trusted the babysitter to do those things for her. And so in the midst of God being our keeper, he is our babysitter. Because he is, we are his children. So in the midst of the things that we cannot do for ourselves, God is here to keep us and to help 
us and to see us through those things that we cannot do for ourselves. And so in this thing in our life, in this journey that we've been in, there's been some times in our life to where we couldn't do some things for ourselves. There's been some times in my life, y'all, where I could not pray for myself. There's been some times where I just could not, I was so deep down in it, I could not pray for myself, but I remembered that Jesus was alive and that Jesus was making intercessions for me. The Holy Spirit, the moanings and the groanings, the Holy Spirit was doing it for me. And God, through God, the Trinity, the Godhead, he was doing it for me. He was keeping me. He's already here, y'all. He was keeping me. He kept me from danger seen and unseen. I, I never forget one morning it was uh, it was raining and uh, probably somewhere around 1986, 87. My husband had a, uh, I think it was like a 76, that old 76 Chevrolet, and we was on the freeway and it was storming, Judy. And he was trying to take me to work because he was working at night. And we got up to uh, East My Houston. And when we got up to East My Houston, you know, if y'all ever been on 59, there's a steep embankment right there at East My Houston because it, 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 it was a bridge. I think they fixed it now. But it used to be a steep embankment there because you was going over the bridge. And just as we got up over that bridge, it's like the wind got up under that truck. And it lifted that truck up and we tumbled down that embankment off the freeway. But as we was tumbling, ladies, I felt somebody put their arms around me. And it wasn't a seatbelt. It was actual arms that went around me and it was holding me, pinning me to the seat. He was keeping me. He was keeping me, y'all. He was keeping me from danger seen and unseen. And when I think about, hang on, help is already here. He's been here for me. Down through the years, he's been here for me. And so when I think about that, I say, you know what, God? You are keeping me. You are keeping me from flying through that window. And then not only did he hold me, he held that two-ton truck. And that truck did not flip. We slid down the embankment down on the feeder road of, nine, of, of 59. In the, in the, and it was raining and hailing so hard we could not see. And I said, what kind of God? Who would not serve a God like that? So ladies, I'm here to tell you this morning on the prayer line, view and Facebook, I'm here to tell you, whatever that hill is, whatever it is, give it to God. He is already here. He's waiting to help you. He's waiting for you to call out and cry out to him. Whatever that addiction is, whatever that affliction is, give it to God. God can fix it. He will wrap his arms around you and he will put a chokehold on you and he will keep you. Yes, he will. I know he will. I'm a living witness that he is the source and the strength of my life. He is the joy of my salvation. He is my all and all. Because y'all just don't know, standing here this morning, he been keeping me, y'all. He been keeping me. He been keeping me. The doctor said that my lungs is compromised. God said, no, they ain't. God said, ah. As long as I'm blowing breath in you, they ain't compromised. Oh, two weeks ago, he said, stop saying that. Stop saying that. They're my lungs. I created them. I know them. I got you. Stop it. And in our life, sometimes we just got to stop it. We just got to stop it. We got to stop it and focus on the bigger picture. Focus on God. Uh, 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 I'm reminded of a, of a story. Uh, and I keep, I, I keep using my husband because that's, that's, that's all I got. He's a... Uh, He's a trainee. He's a truck driver trainee. And so when he's training drivers, he, he always tells them to get the big picture. And so when we're driving, I don't hardly drive, but when I do, those, yeah, he tells me and Gail, get the big picture. 
And what he's telling us is, don't just tunnel vision and see the things before you. Look around. Look around. Because when you look around, you see more. So when we look around our life, we see more of God in our life. When we get the big picture, we know that our help is already here. When we get the big picture, your help is already here, Bressler. He's here. He's sustaining you. He's keeping you. He's watching over you. He's moving us from point A to point B. He's saying, walk on, see. Walk on by faith because I got you. He said, no matter what it is, hang in there. I created them. I know them. I know when to move. I know when to stop. I need you. Walk with me. That's what he wants you to do. Walk with him. And just hang on in there because your help is already here. And sometimes in our help and the strength of our help, we want to do it in our own strength. We want to, he says he protect us from our enemy. And we want to tell the enemy to get on our feet. We want to tell the enemy to get back. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Well, this psalm is telling me that I got to take my focus off me because I don't have the strength to bind the enemy. I don't have the strength to protect me from the enemy. My strength comes from God. I don't have the strength to do it. It's not within my strength. It's not within my might, but it's within the strength and the might of the almighty God. It's in him who counsels us. It's in him who is greater than us. It is, it is in him who never lost a battle. It is in him that great is his faithfulness. He's, he's not... He's, he, he's not going to leave us. He's going to be there to protect us. He, he's he's, he's going to stay the course. He's not going to leave. He's going to protect us from dangers seen and unseen. And when the psalmist is talking here, he's talking about the Lord. Uh, we talked about him being our keeper. The Lord is our shade on the right hand. And so what happens, it talks about when a soldier goes to war, back in the ancient days they had their sword in the right hand, and they had their shield in the left hand. So the shield was only shielding the left side, but the right was open because the sh the, the, they had to use a sword, so their right was uncovered. It wasn't protected. But God protects us on our right side. Well, we don't have no shield. God is my shield. God is my shelter from the stone. God is all that I need. He's protecting me. Yeah. Hang on. All right. All right. Help is already here. Right. So when we think that we're coming up and the enemy is beating us down, just tell God, protect my right side, God. Protect my right side. Just as you protected my left side. Just as you protected my front side. Just as you protected my back side. Just as you protected me side on side. Protect me, God, in the midst of this thing. Because he's trying to chew me up and spit me out. Protect me, God. And he is like the energizer bunny. He's constant and Johnny on the spot. He's right there. Waiting to pick us up and protect us. He's even willing to pick us up. I wear about but he but he can pick me up with all my weight and he can take me out the battle. He will pick you up and take you right on out of that battle. And 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 it's already won. It's already, it's already won. But he tells us in Ephesians 6, he tells us we gotta put on some stuff though. Because this thing, this COVID. This, this, these things going on with our jobs, these things going on with our children in virtual school, these things we see in Washington, D.C., that's our hills. Those, those things we see, but God is saying, no, 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 I'm the, strength of your, I'm the strength of your help. You ain't got to worry about that. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about what you're hearing. Just hear me. Hear, oh, Lord, what I have to say. Just listen to me. And that's what he's telling us. He's telling us that. He is our shade on our right hand. He cools things off when it gets a little hot in the kitchen. He's a, you know, when, you're in the, in the, when the sun is so hot, you're looking for some shade. 
You're looking to get under the shade tree. God is our shade tree. He cools things off when it get hot in the kitchen. He protects us and he keeps us. And if we want our house in order while we're going through this thing, we got to ask God to protect our house. If you're in the house and you're in a, with your husband or your family and you're looking around and saying, this can't be my family, oh, yes, it is. It's yours. They belong to you. But what God wants you to do is to come to him and say, in pocket pen, why are we in the house? Why our children is at virtual school? How about us just bring the virtual Bible and the virtual word of God back in our house? Because he's put us at a place where that's where we need to be. And then all those other thoughts and all that other negativity will move on out the door. And so this is, these are, these are just a little, that was just a little tidbit on the side. That was free. So, 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 so this, this, this is the thing that he's doing for us as he's shading us and protecting us on our right side. He said, the sun shall not strike you by day. Remember when the Israelites was traveling uh, out of Egypt, uh, he gave them a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And he, he gave them that shade. He gave them that, that uh, uh, cloud that clouded them from the heat. Because uh, in, um, uh, oh, over there, I ran. I was trying to look for the word to say. It's hot. It's desert land, and it's hot. And so as they were traveling through the desert, God gave them the cool. He put a cloud over them where the sun wouldn't burn them up. And so, it's, so it is with us in our life. The, 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 the metaphor of the cloud is his help. He, he's cooling when things get heated in our life. When, when the doctors is giving us, uh, 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 telling us we're positive for COVID, God said, don't worry about it. I created it all. I know, I know COVID. Nobody else might not know it, but I know it. Just trust in me. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge me and, you sh and I shall direct your path. But at the same token, if God says stay home, y'all, we got to learn to abide and obey. We got to do what God is telling us to do in this thing, and he will keep us. He will be our shade at our right hand. He will protect us. Uh, it says the sun shall not strike you by day. He's not going to let us have no heat stroke. He ain't going to let us get out here and die behind some things that all we had to do was give it to him. He's not going to let us do that if we trust him, if we hang on and know that he's our helper. But we got to tune in to the Holy Spirit to know what he's saying. Right. And then we got to be obedient to what the Spirit is saying. And I remember a few years ago I was teaching a lesson, and I was talking about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not quiet. Right. Mine not. <laughs> Sometimes the Holy Spirit is shouting. Loud. Loud. Girl, don't you do that. Don't you, don't you say that. Don't, don't you go to. And I'm like, who's that? And I, but he wants us to stop and listen. He wants us to stop and listen. He, he wants us to listen to what his word is saying. He, he, he wants us to trust and know that if we listen to the spirit, he shall not stop strike you, the sun shall not strike you by day. If he say don't go, don't go. That, that's, that, that's, I, I can't sum it up no other way. And the Holy Spirit sometimes say, don't do this. The Holy Spirit say, come out of that black owned restaurant post in Facebook. Don't go in there. Because you're going to see some funnel cakes and some fried chicken and some fish and some, some stuff you know you don't need to see. Don't go in there. But I'm going in there anyway. And then next week, oh, I need to make me a, I need to make me a protein shake with some bananas and, 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 and strawberries. But the Holy Spirit that told me don't go in there. I'm trying. It, it, it's simple. It's simple, Bressler. It really is. It's simple, y'all. And he's telling us, I, I, I'm, I'm, you, you done got struck because you didn't listen. Listen. Then he said, the moon by night. And I was like, now how can the moon do some things to us by night? Well, as I kept reading and, and digging and researching, uh, it's, it's said that in the ancient days, 
there were a, a belief that the moon could smite the mind. And it says that's where, and I learned the word lunatic and luna is, 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 is attached to the moon. So that's where the word lunatic comes from. And yes, and, and they actually thought that the moon could, and, and it was basically, uh, one theologian said, it was basically because they did a long sojourn and they were in the darkness for a long period of time and they got disoriented and depressed about the darkness. And that, y'all, our darkness will get us depressed. Our darkness will help us and make us start acting like lunatics. And so he's saying, but I'm going to protect you from that. We need the light. Come to the light, Carolyn. We need the light. He's going to protect us from that. And so this is it. We've been, thank you, Bressler. We've been may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. There are some dog days that may lay ahead, ladies. I don't know what your hill may be. I don't know what hill you're coming up on. But whatever that hill is, I implore you this morning. I beg you this morning. I just ask you this morning to hang on because your help is already here. Take these scriptures and lean on these scriptures. Take these Take these examples and lean on these examples yes. and trust God yes. to know that you may not understand where you are right now, uh -huh. but trust God to bring you out. Your house may be, it may be a little shaky right now, but trust God to bring you out. He is the source. He is the joy. He is the strength. Yes. He, is, he, he is the life. Yes. He is your alpha yes. and your omega. Yes. Trust him to do and be just who he need to be because he is God. He won't leave you, neither will he forsake you. He said when mother and father put you down, he'll take you up. He said lean on me. Trust in me. He, he said he will vindicate us. He's our advocate. He's still our advocate. We, we, we see the source of him. He's, he's, he's great in, in our trials. He is light in our darkness. He, he, is, he is a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. And he shall not move. But we got to stand firm on his word. He's not moving. We're moving. We move into the soothsayers and we let people read our palm and we let people do our manners of things. But we, we're doing everything but going to our real source of help. And he is our help. He is the help that we need. He is the one that's going to get us through it. And so uh, as we uh, journey on a little further in our lesson, we, we see that he is the source of our help. He's our creator. He's our confirmer. He's our constant helper. He is the strength of our help. He, prote he protects us from our enemies. He protects us from the elements. He protects us from the elements. And in this verse, the psalmist speaks of two possible sources of harm. And I, I, and I kind of went ahead of myself. I already talked about the sunstroke and the moon and the moonstroke and where we get the word lunatic from and how we, we make ourselves just sometimes we can just make ourselves crazy behind stuff that we need to give to God. And sometimes I have to stop and I have to say, don't overthink it. Don't, don't overthink it. Just, just do what you need to do and trust God for the rest. You, 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 you step out of it and do what you need to do and trust God. I was looking at a um, video of some a family and they had went to take a COVID test. And it was so funny because the little girl was so frightened of the COVID test. I mean, it was, it, 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 I mean, I'd never seen anybody. She was just frightened of this thing going up her nose. And every time the, the uh, nurse or the uh, medical staff would get close to her and they would get it close and she would duck. Every time she would get close to her, she would duck. And then she just said, I can't do it. I can't do it. And sometime in our life, every time we get closer to the end and what God wants us to do, we duck. We move the other way. We, we, we forget where our help come from. 
Every time we get a little bit closer and he's trying to show us some things and we duck, he's telling us, he, 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 he's telling us to sit down and let me have it. He, he's telling us, he's telling me some days, don't say nothing. Just be quiet. Pray. Just pray. And I'm going to fix it. But no, I got to practice what I'm going to say before you get home. I got to practice. I done went over everything I'm going to say to you. And the Holy Spirit is saying, no, be quiet. Don't do it. I'm ducking. But that's not what he, he wants us to, to, when he's speaking to us, he wants us to listen. Because if we're not listening, we don't know he's our keeper. If, if, if we're not engaged with him, we don't know that he's our keeper. If, 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 if we're not intimate with him, we don't know that when the sun get hot, he won't strike us. He'll let us make it through. We won't know that in the dark days of our life, when it's darkness coming, we won't know that in the dark, God will be the light. We won't know that if we don't sit still and get quiet and listen to the spirit that lives inside of us. We have to tune into the spirit to know all of this that's going on inside of us. God is our help. He, we don't have to look to the hills. There's nothing in the hills, but it's everything in God. Everything is in God. He is, it's in his character. It's in his righteousness. It's in his poises. It's in his, because we are all in him because he created humanity. He created it. He's greater than the resources that we got because he's our source. Without the source, we don't have no resources. We can't have resources. We can't have a paycheck without a job. Uh, you know, with, with, without God, we can't wake up in the morning. It ain't the alarm clock. He's the help that's waking us up. He's the one that's keeping us breathing. And so we have to look unto him from whence cometh our help, yeah. knowing that our help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who stood on nothing and took something and made heaven and earth. He protects us. He protects us from the enemy. He protects us from the element because y'all know the enemy is going to and fro like a warring lion. And he's, he's trying to wonder how can he get to us, but God is protecting us. And last and not least, uh, verse 7 and 8, he is the security of our help. He is security. He secures us. We are preserved from evil. We are preserved for eternity. Verse 7 and 8 says, the Lord shall not preserve you from, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. That word all means all. No matter what it is, he's going to preserve you from it. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore to eternity. We are preserved from evil. We are preserved from eternity. There is nothing that the enemy can do to us. There's nothing. This soul doesn't belong to him. When he was wandering to and fro, looking for someone to whom he will, shall devour, he had tacked his eyes on Job. And I'm wondering today, are we living like Job? Are, are, are we perfect and upright? And that word perfect don't mean perfect. It just means that Job trusted God. Job held up the standards and the commandments of God. Because there's none perfect, no, not one, only his son. But that word means that Job trusted God, Job believed in God, Job loved God, and Job held God to a high esteem, he reverenced God. Yeah. And so the enemy knew that. And so when the enemy know that you're trying to do something in the, in the rightness, in the eye of God, he comes lurking. But here he is. Hang on. Our help is already here. We are preserved from evil. We are preserved from it. Don't let him get the best of you. Because he'll whisper in your ear and tell you you ain't nothing. You ain't no good. Now, oh, he, he, he don't want you, girl, move on. He, um, he, will, he will tell you, ooh, child, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's around the corner. It seems like this COVID. 2020, I just want to throw 2020 away. God said, no, I made 2020. There's some things going on in 2020 that we don't believe. But I made it. And I'm here to let you know, change your language. Tim told us, Pastor Tim told us this morning, we got to change some things while being transformed and, and to get the promises of God. We got to change some things. We got to change our language if we know our help is here. 
We got to change some things. I just told y'all he told me to stop it. We got to change some things. We got to change our thought pattern. We got to change the way we think. We got to change the way we do some things and start speaking life into our situation. He, in Ezekiel, he told those dry bones that they could live. And them bones got up and started connecting to each other. They were dead, but they got up and started connecting to one another, knowing that the help was already there. And this is what we got to do. And in this COVID time, he want us to connect with one another. I've learned when I'm on Facebook or when I'm talking to people, when they're telling me things, I'm listening. I used to didn't listen that well. I used to want to, before people got through talking, I wanted to fix the problem. And I'll never get girl that called me one day and she was talking and I was just talking along with her. I was saying, you need to do this and you need to do this. And she was quiet because that's my child. She's so different from me. She's so passive. And she stood there when I got through talking. She said, Mama, she said, I don't need you to fix it. I just wanted you to listen. And sometimes we just, we, we just got to listen in order to be preserved from evil. Because while we're running our mouth, we run into evil. We're not listening to what the Spirit is saying. We have to sit, Judah, and be still because he wants us to listen in order to preserve. Because he, he's telling us, he, he, and, and Job, after all that had happened to Job, Job lost his family, Job, Job lost his cattle, Job was a rich man, Job lost everything. And sometimes we can be like Miss Job. Miss Job said, huh, child, you done lost everything. You might well just go and curse your God and die. Because, I I, you know, I don't know nothing else to tell you. And that's our problem. Sometimes we don't know nothing else to tell people, and that's the time when we need to zip it. Because, and, and, and as Christian women, don't zip it. Zip it and pray silently for that person. That God will intercede. If you don't know what to say, pray. If you don't know what to say, pray. Because while we are praying, help is already there. He's waiting. He's waiting for us to call on his name. He's already there. So he preserves us from evil. He, he keeps us in the midst of it all. He keeps us. He keeps us. He keeps us faultless from falling. He can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Because I, 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 I kind of know that. While Job was going through what Job was going through, Job couldn't even imagine being blessed on top of blessings the way he was blessed at the end. But all he wants us to do, ladies, is hold on. Run on and see what the end's going to be. He don't want us to give up. He don't want us to give in. He don't want us to throw in the towel. He wants us to stand tall in his word. He don't want us to throw in 2020. He wants us to walk through 2020 by faith and not by sight. He wants us to know that we are new creatures in him. He wants us to know that we are more than conquerors. He wants us to know that we have overcome because he has overcome. He wants us to know to put on, prep, prep, prep ourselves for going to battle. He wants us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. He wants us to shine our feet with the preparation of the gospel. He wants us to put on our helmet of truth. He wants us to pick up our sword, which is our Bible. He wants us to get ourselves ready. If you ever seen a fireman or a policeman, that fireman not going into a fire with just some regular clothes on. That fireman is going to suit up. That fireman is going to put on those fireproof boots and that suit. He's going to put that helmet on. He's going to have his hose to put out the fiery darts in the fire. And this is what God wants us to do in our hanging on, knowing our help is here. God wants us to suit up, ladies. Because this thing, ain't, it ain't about us. It's about him getting the glory out of our life. It is about us pointing somebody to Christ in the midlife crisis of their life. It is about us walking through this thing with our head held high. It is about us walking like Loretta Devine when she walked in that movie. Okay, watch it. Now. God is watching. God is watching. He's watching, y'all. God is watching. And so in this thing, he's preserved us from evil. The devil can't do no harm because he's preserved us. We can't put him on our feet. We can't bind him up. 
We just got to speak the word. The word says resist him and he will flee. That's all we got to do is do what the word says. And, and it says he's preserved us to eternity. And oh, what a day, what a day, what a day it will be. When all God's children get together. What a day, what a time, what a time, what a time. And so this is the things that he want us to do. He want us to uh, know that he's our source. He's a source of our help. He wants us to know that he's our creator. He wants us to know that he's our confirmer. He wants us to know that he's a constant help. He wants us to know that he's greater than the Energizer Bunny. He wants us to know that he don't have a battery. He, he wants us to know he don't need a battery pack. He wants us to know that he's doing it all within his will and within the Holy Spirit and within his son, Jesus Christ, whose blood that was shed on Calvary's cross that gave us the right to the tree of life, that blood that never, ever, ever loses its power. He wants us to know that he is constant. He wants us to know that the strength of our help comes from him. He wants us to know that when we are weak, he is strong. He wants us to know to keep running on in Jesus' name. He wants us to know that he will protect us from the elements when it's raining in our life, when our roof is leaking. This old building, just keep on leaning. But God wants us to know that he will prop us up on every leaning side. Even though this building is leaning, God is propping me up. And I thank him for that. I give him glory. I give him power. I give him divine reverence for what he's doing in my life. He wants us to know that he is strength. He is keeping us. He is protecting us from the elements. He's protecting us from the enemy. He's protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. When I was a little girl, I used to hear my mama pray that prayer that God protect my children, protect my home from danger, seen and unseen. And I used to say, how's she going to pray for danger, seen and unseen? But now, where I am now, I understood what she was praying about. I walked through what she's praying about. I told my child, I get in the car and I'm a backseat driver. I'm a front seat driver because I don't sit in the back because I want to see. And I tell her how to drive. I tell her, I can tell her where to go. I can, I can do all that. And so when she get a little tired of me, you know, she'll say, Mom, do you want to drive? And sometimes that's what God is telling us because sometimes we backseat driving. We telling God how to package it. We telling God when we need it. We telling God how we want it. We telling him to send it by Amazon Prime because we'll get it in two days. We telling God what to do. We telling him everything. And God is saying, okay, now, I'm driving this, but do, do you want to drive? He asked us, do we want to drive? And so in that protection, in that strength, he said, let me do this in my own strength. Because your strength ain't big enough. You ain't bold enough. You ain't old enough to do it in your own strength. He said, let, let me do this. You don't know enough. So let me do it. And so this is what God is saying this morning to us ladies. He's, 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 he's saying, I am the source of your help. I'm the strength of your help. I'm the security of your help. He's saying, uh, we are preserved from evil. We are preserved for eternity. And that eternity knows that, you know, we know as believers, I already know where I'm going. I already know I want to be a first rounder. And so in this thing, he want us to know that today, choose who we're going to set our eyes on. Choose to know that God is sovereign. Choose to know that he is with us and he is with you. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. He is good. He is ever present. He is with us. And he will be with us from now until forevermore. And I am uh, humbled and I'm thankful and grateful for this time. And we, um, as we journey to a close, I am going to um, close out in prayer. Father God, we come. We come to say thank you. 
Thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being kind. You have been just. You have been everything that we need you to be, and I thank you right now this morning that I can hang on a little while longer to know that my help is already here. Father, I pray for each woman that's here this morning. I lift her before your throne of grace. I lift Sienna. I lift Judy. I lift Bressel. I lift April. I lift Chansonique who left. God, I pray your strength in them. I pray that whatever the hills are, I lift those ladies that's on this line, on this conference call this morning, Father God. I lift those that are looking via Facebook. Father, whatever their issues are, whatever their challenges are, God, help them to know that help is already here. All we need to do is tune into you. We thank you for what you're going to do. We love you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus.